Hi everyone, and welcome back to The Giver. Today we are going to work on chapter 11. So grab your books and let's get started, or follow along on screen. Here we go. Chapter 11, let's see what's gonna happen to him. Jonas felt nothing unusual at first. He felt only the light touch of the old man's hand on his back. He tried to relax, to breathe evenly. The room was absolutely silent, and for a moment, Jonas feared that he might disgrace himself now, on the first day of his training, by falling asleep. Then he shivered. He realized that the touch of the hands felt suddenly cold. At the same instant, breathing in, he felt the air change, and his very breath was cold. He licked his lips, and in doing so, his tongue touched the sudden chilled air. Okay, it's really weird. <laughs> it was very startling. But he was not at all frightened now. He was filled with energy. And he breathed again, feeling the sharp intake of frigid, frigid, frigid air. Now, too, he could feel cold air swirling around his entire body. He felt it blow against his hands, where they lay at his sides and over his back. The touch of the man's hands seemed to have disappeared. Now he became aware of the entirely new sensation. Pinpricks. You know, it's like um, you get the stabbing feeling in your skin. Hmm. No, because they were soft and without pain. Okay, fine. It didn't feel like that. <laughs> Tiny, cold, feather-like feelings peppered his body and face. He put, his, hmm? he put out his tongue again and caught one of the dots of cold upon it. It disappeared from his awareness instantly. But he caught another and another. The sensation made him smile. One part of his consciousness knew that he was still lying there on the bed in the annex room. Yet another separate part of his being was upright now, in a sitting position, and beneath him he could feel that he was not on the soft, decorated bed covering at all, but rather seated on a flat, hard surface. His hands now held through at the same... Hmm? Bleh. See, there we go. Mistakes happen. His hands now held, though at the same time they were still motionless at his sides, a rough, damp rope. And he could see through his eye. Boy, I tell you what. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Here we go. And he could see, though his eyes were closed, he could see a bright, whirling torrent of crystals in the air around him and he could see them gather on the backs of his hands like cold fur. His breath was visible. <laughs> it must be freezing where he is. Beyond, through the swirl, see, though, though, the <laughs> I got it this time. Beyond through the swirl of what he now somehow had perceived was the thing the old man had spoken of, snow. He could look out and down a great distance. He was up high somewhere. The ground was thick with furry snow. But he sat slightly above it on a hard, flat object. Sledge. He knew it abruptly. He was sitting on a thing called a sledge. And the sledge itself seemed to be poised at the top of a long, extended mound that rose from the very land where he was. Even though he thought the word mound his new consciousness told him hill. Okay. Then the sledge, with Jonas himself upon it, began to move through the snowfall, and he understood instantly that now he was going downhill. No voice made an explanation. The experience explained itself to him. He cut his... <laughs> his face cut. He didn't cut his face. <laughs> his face cut through the frigid air, as he began the descent, moving through the substance called snow on the vehicle called sledge, which propelled him, which propelled itself on what he now knew without a doubt to be runners. Comprehending all of those things as he sped downwards, he was free to enjoy the breath breathless glee that overwhelmed. Man, this book is weird. <laughs> it's the way they say stuff, right? <laughs> I feel like I'm eating the words. <sighs> he was free to enjoy the breathless glee that overwhelmed him. The speed, 
the clear cold air, the total silence, the feeling of balance and excitement and peace. Then, as the angle of incline lessened, as the mound, the hill, flattened, nearing the bottom, the sledge's forward motion slowed. The snow was piled now around it, and he pushed with his body, moving it forward, not wanting the exhilarating ride to end. Finally, the obstruction of the piled snow was too much for the thin runners of the sledge, and he came to a stop. He sat there for a moment, panting, holding the rope in his cold hands. Tentatively, he opened his eyes, not his snow hill sledge eyes, for they had been opened throughout the strange ride. He opened his ordinary eyes and saw that he was still on the bed, that he had not moved at all. Blech. So weird. The old man, still beside the bed, was watching him. How do you feel? he asked. Jonas sat up and tried to answer honestly. Surprised, he said, after a moment. The old man wiped his forehead with his sleeve. Whew, he said. It was exhausting. But, you know, even transmitting that tiny memory to you, I think it lightened me just a little. Do you mean... You did say I could ask questions. The man nodded, encouraging his question. Do you mean that now you don't have the memory of it, of that ride on the sledge anymore? That's right, a little weight off this old body. Oh, that's weird. But it was such fun, and now you don't have it anymore. I took it from you. The old man laughed. All I gave you was one ride on a sledge. On one sledge. In one snow. On one hill. I have a whole world of them in my memory. I could give them to you one by one, a thousand times, and there would still be more. Oh, that's nice. Are you saying that I, I mean we, could do it again? Jonas asked. I'd really like to. I think I could steer by pulling the rope. I didn't try that this time, because it was so new. The old man, laughing, shook his head. Maybe another day, for a treat. But there's no time, really, just to play. I only wanted to begin by showing you how it works. Now, he said, turning business-like, lie back down, I want to. Jonas did. He was eager for whatever experience would come next. But he had, suddenly, so many questions. Why don't we have snow and sledges and hills, he asked. And when did we in the past? Did my parents have sledges when they were young? Did you? The old man shrugged and gave a short laugh. No, he told Jonas. It's a very distant memory. That's why it was so exhausting. I had to tug it forward from many generations back. It was given to me when I was a new receiver. And the previous receiver had to pull it through a long time period too. But what happened to those things? Snow and the rest of it. Climate control. Snow made growing food difficult limited the agricultural periods, and unpredictable weather made transportation almost impossible at times. It wasn't a practical thing, so it became obsolete when we went to the sameness. They made snow obsolete? They just said, eh, no more snow. Huh. And hills too, he added. They made conveyance of goods unwieldy. Trucks, buses slowed them down, so he waved his hand as if a gesture had caused, caused the hills to disappear. Sameness, he concluded. They got rid of all the hills. Wow. Jonas frowned. I wish we had those things still, just now and then. The old man smiled. So do I, he said. But that choice is not ours. But sir, Jonas suggested. Since you have so much power, the man corrected him. Honor, he said firmly. I have great honor. So will you, but you will find that that is not the same as power. Lie quietly now, since we've entered into the topic of climate. Let me give you something else, and this time I'm not going to tell you the name of it, because I want to test the receiving. You should be able to perceive the name without being told. I gave away snow and sledge and downhill and runners by telling you them, telling them to you in advance, okay, without being instructed. Jonas closed his eyes again. He felt his hands on his back again and waited. Now it came more quickly, the feeling. This time, the hands didn't become cold, but instead began to feel warm on his body. 
They moistened a little. The warmth spread, extending across his shoulders, up his neck, onto the side of his face. He could feel it through his clothed parts, too. A pleasant, all-over sensation. And when he licked his lips, this time, the air was hot and heavy. He didn't move. There was no sledge. His posture didn't change. He was simply alone somewhere, out of doors, lying down, and the warmth came from far above. It was not as exciting as the ride through the snowy air, but it was ple pleasurable. See? It was pleasant. It was pleasurable and comforting. His weird word choices. He suddenly perceived the word for it. Sunshine. He perceived that it came from the... They don't know what sunshine is? Okay. <clears throat> he perceived the word for it. Sunshine. He perceived that it came from the sky. Then it ended. Sunshine, he said aloud, opening his eyes. Good. You did get the word. That makes my job easier. Now so much, not so much explaining. And it came from the sky. That's right, the old man said. Just the way it used to be. <laughs> I don't have sky? <laughs> okay, this place is crazy. That's right. Just the way it used to be, before sameness, before climate control, Jonas added. The man laughed. You receive well and learn quickly. I'm very pleased with you. That's enough for today, I think. We're off to a good start. There was a question bothering Jonas. Sir, he said. The chief elder told me, she told everyone, and you told me too, that it would be painful. So I was a little scared, but it didn't hurt at all. I really enjoyed it. He looked quizzically at the old man. The man sighed. I started you with memories of pleasure. My previous failure gave me the wisdom to do that. He took a few deep breaths. Jonas, he said, it will be painful, but it need not be painful yet. I'm brave. I really am, Jonas said, sat up a little straighter. The old man looked at him for a moment. He smiled. I can see that, he said. Well, since you asked the question, I think I have enough energy for one more transmission. So here comes the pain. Hmm. Lie down once more. This will be the last today. Jonas obeyed cheerfully. He closed his eyes, waiting, and felt the hands again. Then he felt the warmth again, the sunshine again, coming from the sky of this other consciousness that was so new to him. This time, as he lay basking in the wonderful warmth, he felt the passage of time. His real self was aware that it was only a minute or two, but his other memory-receiving self felt hours pass in the sun. His, su his skin began to sting. Restlessly, he moved one arm, bending it, and felt a sharp pain in the crease of his inner arm at the elbow. Ouch, he said loudly, and shifted on the bed. Ow, he said. Wincing at the shift and even more, even moving his mouth to speak, make his face hurt. He knew there was a word, but the pain kept him from grasping it. Then it ended. He opened his eyes, wincing with discomfort. It hurt, he told the man. And I couldn't get the word for it. It was sunburn, the old man told him. It hurt a lot, and it does hurt a lot, <laughs> Jonas said. But I'm glad you gave it to me. It was interesting, and now I understand better what it meant, that there would be pain. The man didn't respond. He sat silently for a second. Finally, he said, get up now. It's time for you to go home. They both walked to the center of the room. Jonas put his tunic back on. Goodbye, sir, he said. Thank you for my first day. The old man nodded to him. He looked drained and a little sad. Sir, Jonas said shyly. Yes. Do you have a question? It's just that I don't know your name. I thought you were the receiver. But now you s but you say that now I'm the receiver. So I don't know what to call you. The man had sat back down in the uncomfortable upholstered... Wow! Let's say that again. The man had sat back down in the comfortable upholstered chair. <laughs> he moved his shoulders around as if to ease away from an aching sensation, so he's sore. He seemed terribly weary. Call me the giver, he told Jonas. <laughs> this, this is weird. They got rid of sunshine. 
<laughs> climate control is scary. <laughs> it's been a while, but this book is really kind of weird. <laughs> okay. So let's take a look at our first questions for this chapter. All right, here we go. Question number one. What happened to the giver after Jonas received the memory? Was everything okay? Maybe. Question number two. Why doesn't it snow in the community? Hmm. That was weird, right? Why? Oh, question number three. Why did the giver give Jonas memories of pleasurable things first? Hmm. There was a reason for that. And it was smart, I think. Learned from mistakes, I guess. And question number four. Why do you think that the first pain memory the giver gives Jonas is of a simple sunburn? Hmm. I bet you there was some logic to that. What do you think the answer to that question could be? And now, I will see you for chapter 12. <laughs> I had to think for a second. This book really is strange, right? <laughs> but I want to know more. I want to know what's going to happen next. And I'll see you for that chapter. Goodbye.